that what I'm saying is the truth. Thank you, Carl. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Donna Hare, and I worked at Philco Ford Aerospace for from 1967 to 1981. During that time, I was a design illustrator, draftsman. Uh, I did the launch slides and landing slides, and also projection plotting boards, lunar maps for NASA. We were a contractor, but it, most of the time I worked on site. Excuse me, in Building Eight, I had the opportunity to do extra work during downtime, which was between missions, and I walked into a photo lab, which was the NASA lab, across the hallway. I had a secret clearance, which is not that high, but I was able to go into restricted areas, which this was. Uh, at the time, I was talking to one of the techs in there, and he drew my attention to a photograph, that, a NASA photograph. It had a dot on it. And I said, what is that? Well, he drew my attention to it. And, and I said, is that a, a dot on the emulsion? And he said, and he's smiling, and he has his hands crossed. And he said, uh, round dots on the emulsion don't leave round shadows on the ground. And this was an aerial photograph of the Earth. I'm assuming the Earth, because it had pine trees on it. And the shadows of the craft, or whatever it was, were in the same angle as the trees. And by its very nature, UFO, and I wanted to clarify that to a gentleman that was talking to me, means unidentified. So I did not know what this was. But I realized at this point that it's very secret, that it was kept secret because I asked him, what are you going to do with this piece of information? And he said, we always airbrush these out before we sell them to the public. So they're pes pesky little creatures uh, appearing on this uh, photograph they wanted to get rid of. Uh, after that, I decided I would ask questions to other people that work there. And I found that I had to ask them away from the site and not on site. A guard told me that he was asked to burn some photographs and not to look at them. And there was a guard, another guard guarding him, who was in green fatigues, watching him burn the photographs. And he said he was too tempted. He looked at one, and it was a picture of a UFO. And he was very descriptive. I can go into that later with anyone. Uh, he immediately was hit in the head, and he had a big gash in his forehead. He was knocked out, and he's terrified, so he would have to be protected. Uh, another incident, I knew someone in quarantine with the Apollo astronauts. He told me that the Apollo astronauts saw craft on the moon when we landed, and that is what he told me. And he also was afraid, he said, that the astronauts are told to keep this quiet. They're not allowed to talk about it. So I do want to let you know that I worked out there for a number of years, and this I ran into this. So it's not something everyone knows that works out there for a long time. My boss didn't know about it. Uh, some people that sat right next to me didn't know about it. It's, it's very strange because I don't know how they can do it, but they can let some people know about it and then others not. I'm willing to testify before Congress that what I'm saying is true, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen and members of the press. I, my name is Larry Warren. Uh, 20 years ago, in 1980, I was a security specialist assigned to RAF Bentwaters, Woodbridge, NATO uh, Air Force facilities in Suffolk, East Anglia. I had a secret uh, security clearance. I guarded uh, our backline nuclear weapons that were stored there at the time un without the knowledge of the people of Great Britain. Uh, I went through a uh, portion of a three-night UFO event where objects made incursions over our WSA, fired pencil-thin beams of light into them, and adversely affected the ordnance, possibly. These objects were on the ground on two different nights. Potentially, there was another life form seen. This is an unpopular truth. These events were of extreme defense significance to not only Her Majesty's government, but this government as well, and they are still shrouded in secrecy. Uh, they are very complex, they are very vast. This is more about a human rights issue than just a UFO issue. Uh, 20 years ago, this room would be empty. I see a turn in history. 
This is history in motion, but unfortunately it's history with the security classification. I would be more than honored to swear under oath that I experienced what I did, I saw what I saw. These events produced not only uh, after numerous denials by this government, a memo by Lieutenant Colonel Charles Holt, our deputy base commander, which reads like science fiction. It also produced years later an on-site audio tape he made as these objects uh, performed their feats and did what they did and violated airspace. These events are of extreme defense significance. I hope my brothers in arms that went through these events will be given immunity at some point and be able to join us here. It is an honor to share the stage with all of these peop people. And uh, I think for all our children, my son Dennis, God bless you son, um, we can change the world. You're heroes for being here also. And I will testify in front of Congress if asked to. God bless, thank you. Hi, my name is uh, George Filer III. The reason I'm here is because uh, George Filer V is in the hangar and will be born on Friday. And, I, and uh, I'm a retired intelligence officer and flyer with almost 5,000 hours. And uh, I didn't believe in UFOs until London Control called us in the winter of 1962 and asked us, would we chase one? And we said, sure. So we let down from 30,000 feet to 1,000 feet where the UFO was hovering, and we went into a steep dive and actually exceeded the uh, red line of the aircraft. So it's kind of dangerous chasing UFOs. In any case, uh, I was able to get the UFO on the aircraft radar at about 40 miles, and we could see a light out in the distance. And as we closed, we kept on picking up this radar return point I'm mentioning that the radar return was very uh, distinct and uh, solid indicating it was some kind of a metallic object. We got about a mile from the UFO and it kind of lit up in the sky and went off into space very similar to what the shuttle looks like when it takes off. Um, later on I was working in intelligence in Vietnam, I briefed uh, General Brown about UFOs when I was in uh, 21st Air Force, in McGuire Air Force Base. I briefed General Glau about a UFO over Tehran, Iran in 1976 that two F-4s from the Iranian Air Force had taken off and tried to intercept the UFO. And when they turned on their fire control systems, they immediately went off all the electrical systems went out, the planes had to return to base. This was particularly significant because it was also picked up on satellites. In 1978, on January 18th, I was going into the base. Every morning I did the uh, briefing to the general staff and I noticed that uh, there are some lights off in the distance at the end of the end runway there. And when I got into the command post, the uh, senior master sergeant in charge said that there had been UFOs in the pattern all night. They're on radar. The tower had seen them. They got in aircraft reports and so on. And that one had landed or crashed at um, Fort Dix. Fort Dix and McGuire are right together. And this is kind of like the Roswell of the East. But in any case, uh, an alien had come off the craft and had been shot by a military policeman and apparently was wounded and was heading for McGuire. So for whatever reason, the uh, aliens liked uh, the Air Force better than the Army perhaps because they're <laughs> shooting at them. But in any case, uh, our security police went out there and uh, found him on the end of the runway dead. And uh, they asked me to brief the general staff, a General Tom Sadler, and uh, at the eight o'clock stand-up briefing. And I said, I don't think I want to do this. You know, the general doesn't have a good sense of humor, and I'm not sure I, I believe this. So I did some checking, called the 438th Command Post, and everybody had pretty much the same story. And uh, at eight o'clock that morning just before I went on was going to brief this and I was very wor worried about it. They said don't brief it that it's too hot so to speak. That's pretty much my story and I'm prepared to tell the story in front of Congress. 
and uh, it is a truth. Now, because of this, 